All right, cool. So we're going to actually do a quick introduction to design thinking. Uh, and also, I'm going to share a bit of design initiatives, uh, DBA, at DBA, which is a, a, a short form called Digital Business Academy. And also what we, that I'm currently part of, that I'm also sharing with Hetman Yu uh, group, that is called Startup Campus. That I'm looking forward to actually also onboard you guys to be a Startup Campus member because we try to actually expand. And all of this, what we do in Magic, being a government agency, we do this for free, yeah? So if you guys do not leverage on this, it will be quite a, a, a waste of, uh, of taxpayers' money. This is basically your money, so <laughs> please utilize it, okay? So uh, in terms of design thinking, right? Um, now, like I just explained to you guys, my background is not from the computer science, not from uh, interactional design. So you have to actually understand that when you go into design, that design is not just what makes things pretty, but also design is how things work. So you have to think of that, move away from that concept when every time you talk about design, people so, so often keluar that, you know, brand, keluar logo, Keluar, um, or uh, posters, keluar, uh, presentation slides. Uh, that is true for one element, but design also talk about how things work. And that's where design thinking comes in, right? So in terms of design thinking, there's five stages to it. So empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. And all of this can be done in a day if you're an expert. Uh, but there are also out there that we, I would like to also share that we do this per stages in one day. So you have to actually look at it as a whole individual concept. Uh, empathize one module. Define as one module. Ideate as one module. Prototype as one module. And test as one module. All of this should be done if you want to be immersive in design thinking. Do it in five days straight. And here's the thing. You cannot, cannot have this in the room, right? Not even for research. So that's the, that's the thing. So you get, you get your lecturers uh, uh, agreement. You get your, if lecturers are doing this for your faculty, get your dean's approval. To have five days set aside, allocate for design thinking process for you to actually go through the whole process. And I, I'm willing to actually uh, do this with you guys because I do this um, uh, on, a, on a professional capacity. I'm professionally certified to actually bring you guys uh, throughout this, uh, this journey. So, uh, but on today's one hour, I can only give you guys basically the tips of the iceberg, yeah? So um, I try my best to encapsulate the whole experience for you guys. Uh, but just drop any questions if you have any uh, down the line, and I'm going to entertain you guys as we go along. So let's go on the day one. So day one in terms of empathize. So I would like to actually talk about empathize or empathy specifically is that it's very important is because um, so often when you go into problem solving, you look at the problem itself instead of the user or the people who are affected by the problem itself. So I like this quote, and I hold this quote for Empathize uh, module, where you can only understand people if you feel them in yourself. So you have to put yourself in that person's shoe, right? And that is where uh, in design thinking has always been the first module is to talk about the user itself first. Because sometimes you already have a pre-existing assumptions. So you need to actually break that part, that assumption first by understanding uh, your user. So if you understand your user, then you realize that your assumption might not be even a validated problem, right? And, and the problems that you think exist might not even exist at all. And then you would actually, uh, the, the worst thing about, about doing uh, problem solving by, by concentrating on the problem itself is you go ahead and create solutions and that solution, you basically just wasted your time and money coming up with a solution that does not have a problem 
at all, right? So that's the reason why empathy is very important. Like, empathize day one is very important. So I'm going to show you one, one picture that encapsulate this kind of narrative, right? So on the left side is, oh, sorry, the Bali. okay? So your design is on the right side and your user is on the left side, right? So if I were to actually uh, encapsulate that in a whole journey, it would be on the left side is user experience. And then the way that you design things is on the right side is the user interface, right? the way that you design things you have to put your user first if not your design will actually be used differently right if for example you said that put your thumb to your phone right put your thumb to your phone where is it here is it here is it here is it here so that is where empathy comes in right so and then if you actually go into deeper on empathy you can actually even break those empathy down by looking at how the user goals are doing. Uh, you can actually refactor the user experience. You can actually look at the design in terms of the advantage, the disadvantage. Uh, and that is just from the user, uh, just from day one. But the thing is, that's not, that is after. Okay, this is, this is next module, the, the picture that I'm showing to you now. But the, day one is for you to actually ask the pointed questions, right? You ask, um, you do interviews. You actually observe them in their natural habitat, I, I would like to say, right? Uh, how they interact with certain, certain things. Like for example, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna, um, if I take into MMU context, right? You wanna actually observe uh, what are the difficulties of um, students doing their online learning. So, from, from an observer point of view, I, I have limited uh, information, right? But I still have information on my screen where, okay, people are uncomfortable opening their, their camera. Why? Right? Um, and then people who are working at home or, or learning at home, you actually have to actually do something else because of you can't actually concentrate 100%. Right? What are those things? What are the things that they have to do that actually deterring for from their goals? Right? Like for example, I see someone is currently driving. I hope you guys, I hope you are driving safely while you are listening to me. <laughs> Your camera was on just now. But that is an example of a very good user experience. So understanding users is key to actually have a very strong design thinking. So you could actually summarize them into this. Right? See their world, you appreciate them as human beings, you communicate your understanding. So basically, when you actually do interviews, you basically parroting what they say, you paraphrase them, uh, and then make sure that they parrot back their agreement, right? And, and that you will understand their feeling, and that is basically the core of day one. So from day one, once you've been, you understood your, 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 your users or your target audience, then you go into day two, right? You go into define. Now, the reason why the word define here is keep open-ended because you want to define as much thing as possible, right? You want to define the users, who are they? You want to define their problems. You want to define what are their frustrations. You want to define uh, what are the potential solutions that you could actually do, right? So in here, I would like to point what I would always say to my, my workshop attendees problems are just solutions undiscovered right you basically have this problem but you're stuck at that problem you just because you can't shift your mindset towards something towards uh the solution itself right so how do you do define how do you define something right so from there like just now when we actually did the empathy map uh, when we actually do the empathize session on day one, you basically map on what they say, what they did, what they think, and what they felt, right? And, and pay attention on these four criteria because as you go along collecting more data and more insight, this four is very important because sometimes what they did is different from what they think, 
right? And what they say might be different than what they felt. So you could actually come up and analyze this thought, those, these thought patterns, uh, because they will actually have different and contradicting uh, information. And from that, you could actually synthesize uh, what does that mean? Um, so it, if you look at, as I go along, you will start noticing that design thinking is not about design itself. It's about the human psychology, the basic, the basic needs of what we have uh, to deal with in the, in the real world. So during the def, uh, defining uh, the empathy itself, you're mapping what they need or, or their problems, you have to always remember the point of view, right? Set aside yourself from the user because you are basically building things for them. So you have to always, always, always map things out, define things from their perspective. Always question, is this my assumption or is that the user assumption? And that from there, you could actually start shifting your problem statements, right? So from there, you can actually create problem statements as you basically map what they, what they did, what they think, how they felt, and uh, what they say. So that you can actually start creating the problem statements. Now, once you already created a problem statements, right? So let's just meet, give me, uh, can somebody just write me uh, an example of a problem statement? I'm a lecturer, so I need you guys to be active with me. Problem statement is a big word, Chaffee. Okay. Uh, when I say problem statement, what are the things that you struggle? Right? Just give me something. During, okay, let, I'll give you an example. Uh, online learning. What are the problems? My struggle is getting the student to interact with me. Ah, okay, so that one, okay, good. How about the students? Give me one another from, from the students. Guys, just just write something. Connection problems. Okay, uh, lag again. Like you, anyone? Distraction. How to survive online fatigue? Yeah, that's actually a very good need. So once you actually have all these problems, right? Now we're gonna actually put them into a question. A re uh, I would say uh, a challenge. Questions, right? So. There's a formula to it for you to shift from a problem statement into a potential solution, right? We call it how might we or HW, uh, HMW. So how might we, right? So you take this how might we questions and put them into this formula, right? How might we action for the user so that impact? Okay, I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to take uh, Point Putri's uh, problem just now. How might we improve interaction for students and teachers so that the le online learning can be successful? Right? And that is a question. So when the reason why you want to actually map your problem statement just now, which is a statement into a question, it will actually start shifting the way that you think, that the way that you view a problem into a potential solution. It is at the moment when I actually raise that, 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 that how might we question 32, your brain does start coming up with ideas. And that's the beauty of our brain, our psychology. Because you, you, if you ask the right question, your brain will start churning up solutions even if you don't want to actually want to actually come up with solutions, right? And then just now I would say, how might we, I'm taking that student's point of view, how might we reduce distractions for myself so that I could actually learn online without being distant? From there, you, you start coming up, your brain subconsciously start coming up with solutions now, right? And that is the beauty of this second day defined, right? And then we go into, oh, sorry, math. Okay, then we go into ideation, right? So ideation, there's several ways of doing it, right? There's brainstorming, if you're doing it with a group, there's also post-it voting. And then there are also ways of when you actually come up with all these various ideas, once you actually 
start answering your own how might we. Uh, you start coming up with, okay, this idea is the most rational one, or this idea is the most delightful one, you know, that, that makes me drawn to it. And this is the best one, the darling of it all. And then there are ideas out there that is a long shot, like, um, oh, we don't have enough resources to do it, we might not have enough budget to do it, and that is basically a long shot. And then you could actually even come up, even, even deep dive even further of what I would like to call um, the bingo selection, right? You come up with three things. Either is it a physical prototype, is it a digital prototype, or is it an experience prototype? So as you see, day three is very fun, but it's very enticing because you start going into the ideas because you understood your users straight on during the first two days, and then you believe that, okay, I'm doing it the right way, right? I know they have these problems. It's validated, it's identified, I've empathized with my user, I've defined the problem statements, and I define the potential solutions, and now I'm going to ideate it. So you spend the whole day come up, coming up with various ideas. You, you, this is not yet prototype, yeah? This is not yet prototype. You just basically put it post-it notes out, out there. I have a lot of post-it notes, even in my house. I'm currently in my house. So I have a lot of post-it notes. Uh, I have this special wall that I have like post-it notes for myself. You could write it down. If you could actually, that's the reason why I would say that put away your phones because your phone is a distraction, right? So once you actually come up with the best idea, you have selected it. If you're working in a group, you already selected, okay, this we want to actually prototype it even further, right? You go into day four, which is prototyping. Once you go into prototyping, there's two types, low fidelity and high fidelity depending on what you do, what you have, right? Even uh, if it's physical, it's digital, or even experience, low fidelity is mostly on paper, right? Uh, you basically just map it out. You would actually get, okay, I'm gonna give you some example. Okay, if you have a canvas, right? A drawing paper at home, right? So I have like, various stationaries out there. So you fold it into two. So this is how you do low fidelity prototype, right? And then you fold it again. And then you fold it another time for the last time. And then you open it. And then you have eight sections, right? You see the crease? So this eight se uh, session represents user steps. Right? So step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and until eight. Now, the reason why there's only eight is because that is the only limitation of our concentration of human psyche. You can't put it in eight steps, then it's probably a bad user, user journey, right? It's probably a bad user experience. So if you could actually even go in even radical, which I would like to do it sometimes, four steps. You could actually do it in four steps of a low fault fidelity prototype. Then it would be a very efficient uh, prototype. So that is low fidelity. Now, high fidelity is literally once you actually have this. So the thing about low fidelity and high fidelity is that once you have to actually do low fidelity as well at the beginning, just sketch it up, and then you go into high fidelity. Now, when you go into high fidelity, is that you start building it, right? You start making prototypes uh, through Figma, through uh, Adobe XD. So then you would start actually map it out from this paper into this, right? And that is it. The challenge of high fidelity prototyping is that you are spending too much time on creating something that might not be validated in the next stage, which is the last stage is the testing page, right? This, this testing stage. So the thing is, when, once you actually create things, do you when you do prototype, you have to go and test it out, right? So when you go up and test it, you have to test it with the intended group. So when remember the first day 
you actually go and do interviews with the users and whatnot. You have to actually do with the same users, right? As the first group sampling. And then you actually test out with a new group that has not been interviewed so that you can actually get even more insight. So I'm going to actually show you some example of how brands out there are doing their, 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 their testing. So this is two kits. So they're actually testing out phones, Xperia X10, with HTC Evo, right? Just for the sake of brands, you know, I don't know which one is the one that is doing the, 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 the business, I mean, the, the testing, but this actually implies if that test, uh, if this test actually succeed, meaning it's user-friendly even for kids, right? And they actually even test it out from, if you, if you look at these two kids, there's one in Asian, there's one is uh, Caucasian, and that also have um, a sampling significance, right? The, the group of these people, um, because some Asian upbringing is different, you know, Caucasian upbringing is different. So the way that they use things also might be different, right? So you have to also remember that try your best to expand your testing even outside your scope uh, to actually even get even more insight. And then you repeat the process again, you know, either, the, either you go back to ideation or you go back to prototyping. If you go back to ideation, meaning that the prototype or the, the whole premise of your, your problem statement or your how might we are the wrong ones, right? So I would like to put this, if you're not prepared to actually uh, be wrong, you never come up with anything original. So Sir Kent Robinson is a very good uh, educationist and he has a lot of, uh, uh, so our demographic in Malaysia is a huge issue. Yeah, actually, correct. Uh, because the thing is how, how um, even in Sabah Sarawak, right, there's Kadaza, there's, uh, there's Daya and whatnot. So often they are left out, right? I'm, I'm a half Sarawakian myself. I'm a Daya Laut. And even myself, the way that my mom, who's a, a full Sarawakian, she brought up different ways of, of thinking. Right? Uh, even in Malaysia, <laughs> yep, I agree. So much headache. The, the thing about design thinking, if it doesn't melt your brain, it is not successful. <laughs> I'm so sorry to say. Yeah, uh, but it's very, very fulfilling, right? And then the more you do it, then the more you actually understood. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of process that goes, yeah, no pain, no gain. So you, there's a lot of things that you actually go into coming up with the right tools and the right product, the right services out there. So you have to remember three things, desirability, viability, feasibility, and doing and that small piece in the middle, that's your goal. You need to achieve that, right? And if you're doing this as a business, you have to think back, right? So you go into um, whether or not your, the, the, your team is there enough feasibility to actually do it? Do you have enough resources to do it? Desirability, do people really want this? Or is just is this product shops in EV, right? Or is this uh, just assumptions that is not validated on, on our end, right? And then viability, business. Do we have enough capital to do it? Do we have enough resources to market this if we manage to cover desirability and feasibility? And you have to find that sweet spot. And design thinking can actually help you uh, solve all this, right? And that's basically it. We, <laughs> I managed to actually encapsulate design thinking in less than 40 minutes. That's because I've done this for a couple of years. So if you look at how the, the, the arrows are moving, there are a flow. You know, you'll be lucky to actually move from one stage to one stage to one stage to one stage without actually back backtracking. You know, empathize, uh, define, ideate, prototype, and test without actually go going back. If you manage to do that, you're probably a very, very lucky few. But design thinking often go back, you know, uh, one step at a, at a time. You, you, when you actually ideate something, you prototype, and then you have to go back and ideate again. Uh, and then when you actually go back to testing and then you realize that, hey, some part of our prototype, you have to define something new 
and then you start iterate. So the thing is design thinking and its various processes, it's not one off, right? The moment you start deploying design thinking in your day-to-day -day life or in your, in your business, in your way of doing things, uh, you will notice that everything is increment. Everything is, is uh, improvable. Right, and everything is um, everything is is subject to stress testing. So that is design thinking, and I open the floor to questions before I jump into the other things that um, magic could actually offer. Thank you so much, Shafi. We have questions already. All right. Yeah. So, so, sir, yeah. you gave some example for the prototyping part. Uh, okay, what, what kind of example do you need? Okay, let me go back to the slide that did. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Um, okay, this is, this is where I am going to understand. You don't, you don't really understand the steps part. Okay. So, all right. So, before you actually go into uh the types the examples of uh look prototyping like just now i said low fidelity and high fidelity right there's three types of uh prototypes okay there's physical prototypes where you probably play with legos or or, or you know moving parts i've seen people who actually done they design a chair using paper right uh and they actually test it out they even like uh, do with with small small things so that you don't actually um, spend too much in in prototyping. And then digital prototyping is the cheapest, the easiest to scale scale up, and it requires only a uh, certain certain part like four category methods. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, digital prototyping, you could actually use prototyping uh, tools out there like uh, Adobe XD, Figma. And then experience prototype requires you to actually make role playing, right? Now, experience is mostly um, mostly improvement or something that you go through day, day to day. Okay, I'm giving an example uh, in your context. Imagine every semester you have to register for a course, right? So uh, if I'm actually redesigning the process, I would actually start observing the students, how they actually register for a course. I look at the link, the website, I look at the speed of the website, and then I start introducing different elements that is new prototypes, right? For example, okay, if I move to um, certain, certain parts in um, that process, like for example, okay, maybe clicking log in, I could actually improve that by using QR code. That is an assumption that you could actually test out, right? Because you are already using your phone, you have a laptop. So I might just scan and then continue on um, filling up the cost on my phone, right? So that's an example. So does that answer your question? Yes, okay, cool. Okay, so cool. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to uh, the second one, which is, can you ex further explain the four categories of methods? Okay, so the four category methods is when you come up with ideas, uh, you discuss with your friends, right? You discuss with me, you, you basically become the person who will actually be the most negative lah out there, you know? Because you want to stress test your, your ideas. Because when you come up with ideas, you tend to hold on to it, right? You have tend to actually, I like this. But it might just be you, you know, right? But your friends or your 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 teammates might think, eh, that's not it, right? So in terms of how do you actually categorize them, right? You need to actually reach into an agreement. So that most rational, most delightful darlings and long shots, darling is probably the top one. If I were to actually put them into a pyramid, darling would be the top, right? The most uh, the long shot will be actually at the bottom, because it requires the most things, right? It requires the most resources, it requires the most um, um, time, your concentration, so long shots, right? Long shots might just, you put it in the back burner, 
difference before you go into the next prototyping stage. The second part, right, would be the most delightful, right? The most delightful, the reason why I put it on the third is because you, you have that feeling of when I read that, when, when I hear that, I say, okay, that would actually make so much life so much easier. And, and if everybody into an agreement, that is most delightful, right? But it's not the second one, right? The second one is the most rational one. Just because it makes the life uh you know life is pretty or uh, like just now when i said to to des design there's two things how it make it looks how how pretty things are or and how make things out are, are working you have to remember that too right just because it sounds good to you it might not be the most rational one right so when you want to actually um uh the rational one you have to be rational you have to be logical you have to actually put into consideration your limitation as developer, as a uh, solution provider. Do you have enough time to, from this most delightful to actually do it, prototype it, you know, at the, the limited time that we have, right? And then you get to Darlings. So Darlings covers everything, right? It's the most rational one, it's the most delightful one. It's not a long shot. And, and it's, it's relatively easy to actually execute in terms of prototyping and testing. So does that answer your question? Ah, oh, what is an example of Darling pro product? Now, Darling product, they uh, like this. Darling products. Ooh, that's a tough one. You have to give me an, a, a problems to come up with, with a good darling product, right? Um, okay, a darling product here. Uh, you know how frustrating going to banks, right? And, and how frustrating it is also to actually go through their online service. Uh, online, online, you know, online banking and whatnot. A darling product would actually make your life better for both online and physical, right? Does that answer your question? Okay, take that. Question don't have to make a lot. Does that answer your question? Okay, cool. So I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, the testing part. Example when the testing requires a large sample size. So do we need to outsource or participate event? Okay, here's the thing. Uh, if you notice design thinking, it follows the scientific methods. Now, the differences between scientific methods and design thinking, design thinking is usually for startups and uh, people who want to actually bring this problem, uh, these solutions that they have validated problems to the market as quickly as they can, right? And they don't want to actually spend too much time com coming up with sample size. So if you are looking into sample size, you might be looking at scientific methods. You, want, you might want to actually come up with like much like research dissertation. That's not design thinking, right? So uh, design thinking follow the same pattern. It's just that right now, okay, uh, 10 interviews, another 10 people who proto testing the prototypes and another 10 who actually have separate, you did not interview in the first day. So you have 30 uh, samples. That's enough, enough for you to actually come up with insights to your samples, to, to, to your uh, testing, right? Okay, so Raiza Alam, the very step in empathizing which is directly related to our emotional being rather than the uh, third. Are there chances of having unrealistic expectation from the idea in the first step? Okay, like I said just now, uh, when, when an unrealistic expectation from the idea, the first step, that's the reason why we have uh, votings, we have categorizations, and we have selections, right? And, and doing as one person, you have to experience this with a group first before you actually do this on your own. Um, and, and even if you do on your own, you still have to include everyone else. Uh, like your users, your your need. So to actually have unrealistic expectation, it will easily be broken down the moment you reach the testing page, 
right? The, the testing stage. So the moment testing phase, the moment you nampak uh, ada like out of out of ten, tiba ada enam orang kata, okay, this is not useful for me. I might not use it. It's already unrealistic. You have to go back to ideating, right? So since we begin, uh, so I hope that answer your question. Since we begin being driven by empathy, are there chance chances of lack of actual research? Is that research part included in the first step? Yes, actually the first part, empathize. You literally sit down and have a chat with the, the person. You know, you already identified, um, you already identified the users, right? The potential users. And then you realize that the things that you're coming up is not the, the people that you actually, for the interviewers stuff. I mean, for the interviewees. There are times where I've interviewed the the, inter, the the person the group that I interview I'm I'm not developing the for that group of the people that I interview I I actually developing use uh stuff for the people that they are complaining about right uh, and, and that could actually be um, um a part of it right and uh, is there a research part including the research part is only interviews and taking notes you know but the thing is when you actually do inter interviews right there are ways of doing interviews that if you could actually do properly um you could ask permission to record and put away notes right just really have an eye and eye right get them like i just now for you to understand someone you have to feel them inside you you have to actually understood what frustrates them what makes them tick right and then you parrot them tick that bad. So in terms of research, that's the that's the part that I feel that is very important. There are interviews out there where they ask questions. It's very like this. Oh, okay. Uh, and and what does that mean? Oh, okay. Uh, when you say that, so you when when you do interviews like that, right? People feel like much. Um, am I just a piece of paper to you? You know. Because humans are humans. You have to feel connected. We, we want to feel connected, right? By having conversation, which down the line, bottom line, in the first day of in empathize, um, memang set the tone lah, memang set the tone, the ground rules, that I'm having a chat for you, to, for me to understand uh, what you are going through. And with your permission, I would like to actually record this and also um, ask you pointed questions. And I would like you to also let me know how you feel and how you think when I ask uh, those kind of questions. And if I, if I hit a nerve, could you elaborate more on that? Uh, so, but I, I still want you to actually also explain um, why do you feel like that, you know? So it's a lot about emotion stuff, right? Um, and and you, you have to set aside, you know, if you basically had a lab code, you put aside that be human first be a person first because that's that's what we need in a very detached now now kita got locked down you know it's really hard to get connected right so that's the best way for you to actually really pay attention be there be present okay uh if empathizing cause fails in the testing process and is unattainable what can we do highly unlikely yeah if you if you empathize well if you actually define what you have empathized with that person correctly and validated that those those definitions um there would not be um uh, any challenges uh, down the line in the testing part but just to actually um avoid it right get clarity now here's a problem here's a challenge that i think lecturers will frustrate about with, with students you guys don't ask questions <laughs> right ask questions the important things of learning is always ask questions right because if you don't ask questions then you don't you're not clear and 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 asking back and forth questions is a learning process learning has always been a two-way process right so you would actually be able to actually inform your lecturer what's going on and the lecturer will actually understand oh there's a there's something in my side in terms of my teaching that is not covered yet, right? And she could, she or he could actually include that in the next lesson. So, so that's I would say that's the baseline on how you can actually avoid uh, all of this, right? 
Uh, okay, so A. All right. <laughs> All right. right. So that's it. Um, may I, may I, one, two, three, just go quickly. Can, can uh, go ahead, go ahead. So wrap things up. Basically, uh, I would say product placement from Magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A very subtle way of it. <laughs> yeah. So now, when you are, when you have done this, very much to the point where you've done, done this a lot of times, you can start dissecting this based on elements, and that's what I do in Magic, that I've broken down this into a one-day session that you could actually do, right? So this is an example. Soul searching, you know, 20-year plan, how, what, how, why, top three values, top three audience, personality sliders, competitive landscape, and then I go into lightning decision modules where I actually come up with ideas straight away, and then I map those ideas based on how high is the impact and how low is the effort? So that's the that's the criteria of, of prototyping, right? How much effort do I need? But does if if I could actually do this in low effort but it has high impact, then do it, right? Now just now when you, you want to empathize something, right? You want to observe someone, customer journey back is what you can actually do from start to finish, right? You map the user journey in terms of their customer. Uh, with customer transactions with you. When I say customer transaction, is whatever user ac actions that they do, right? And then from there, you can even break it down into satisfaction, usable. Usable is the baseline. Then you fast the frustration, and then the time frame. How does how long does it need to actually come up with all this? You know, uh, action from one action A to action B. How long does it take? And then the person in charge in your organization or in your team who are in charge of that role, and you break it down into the roles and responsibility. From there, you could actually break it down in terms of every steps of information architecture on what is and what is not, uh, so that you could actually identify and define even further of what potential things that you could actually do in your, in your, in your prototype. So, Magic also offers uh, a product called Magic Digital Business Academy. This is free. We work closely with University of Cambridge, uh, Tech Nation, and also Department of Digital Culture, Media, and Sports. There's four modules uh, in there, ideas and products, brands and communication, marketing and uh, sales, operations, and finance. All of this is free, right? free for you guys, even lecturers, if you guys want to actually come in and actually experience the courses. There are 84 modules, online learning, self-paced, do it, right? And you could actually gain a certification by a technician supported and endorsed by University of Cambridge. And that has a strong value here as in the startup ecosystem, as well as in the UK employment industry. And then we go into Startup Campus. So Startup Campus, there's three elements to it. Okay, I'm just going to pass through it. So we map out uh, our deliverables in Magic, so to say, in a gamified way, right? So this is a product of design thinking. Our users are aspiring entrepreneurs and experienced founders. So we thought that they have problems knowing where to go. Or sometimes when they actually come up at the mid late, they have problems of actually, they, they miss the things that they, we, we are offering for early and mid stage, right? So we map it out and we want them to actually be part of a community. So we offered them verification. So think of it like macam IC or, or CITOS or CCRIS untuk uh, startup founders, right? And then we actually provide gamification points. So every time you actually go through our courses, you get points. And from those points, you can actually claim perks and quests, right? Uh, so perks is basically much like points. You basically much like, okay, maybe this, you can actually get, uh, you get five experience points. This might get for free, right? Uh, a magic uh, note, notebook, A3, A, A5 notebooks. But if those perks are not good enough for you guys, you can actually use your points to actually come up with quests. Like for example, I need a specific design course and I'm willing to give 10,000 redeemable points, 
right? Put it out there. If somebody wants to actually do it, they actually claim that 10,000 points from you, and then they conduct that design thinking process with you guys. Okay? So campus ID, oh, such a part lah. Okay. Campus ID is basically, like I said lah tadi, um, kita nak get to know you guys so that we can actually personalize our offerings. So startup creation is very uncharted now. So why not give it some more clarity in terms of how you do things? So by we getting to know you, you get to know us even better. And we can actually offer even more personalized solutions to you guys. And then we have gamey, gamified point system. So like I said just now, every time you go through our courses, you get points. You know, experience points will not will constantly go up, but we will not go down, right? Uh, and then redeemable point is something that you transaction, you spend, and you can even claim it from someone, right? So XP and XP, I explained just now, experience points and redeemable points. And then we map it out into bronze, silver, and gold. So much and game lah, right? Uh, so you could actually go through all this. And then uh, you can actually claim those points using perks portals. And then quest. So perks portal, you could actually get from us now. Much like we have media coverage. If you have an idea out there, right? You've gone through certain points and then you get all these points, we help you. Magic has a very good branding and we have a very good relationship with our medias, international and local medias, and we would actually help you market certain, certain things. So we would, you could actually do that. So we will open to it. And then you have quests. So quest is basically like, if your perks is not enough, you need something that is bespoke, that is personalized, then you do quests. You put up quests out there, and you can actually create lead generation, user testing, uh, skill-based exchange or social media assist, and that's it. So we have nearly like 90 plus uh, providers coming up, 50 plus benefits. So if you want, if you have ideas or you already have businesses, you want to actually provide your perks on the perks platform, let us know. Um, and we'll talk about, talk, talk it up, right? So here's the giveaway, right? For the first 10 who actually registered for Startup Campus, uh, there will be a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with me on design thinking or anything, okay? So my expertise is uh, data, trends, um, I would say business de development, um, PR, uh, PR uh, and editorial, and also um, design thinking, lah, uh, right? And UI, UX, user interface and user experience. So then the next one will actually get design thinking group mentorship, the next 25. And then the next 30 will actually get a limited edition magic goodies. So this is just an example. Uh, you could even get like a black version of it if you want, right? And this is special for MMU graduates. We have two, uh, I don't want to put numbers yet, limited spots for remote paid internship for Startup Campus members. So if you basically just eh, sign up, drop me your campus ID number and your resume uh, to my, to, that's my, my magic email, and you could actually, uh, okay, take some more of that. Hold on now, let me list. <laughs> okay, so mymagic.my slash campus, uh, register, then, the first 10 will actually get a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't give mentorship, yeah? You can actually, we have a mentorship platform. If you go through the mentors out there, in there, tak ada. I've stopped giving out mentors, so this is just specifically special for you guys. Uh, one day that I sell, okay? <laughs> one day I sell. <laughs> and, and one, uh, back to you. Thank okay, you so, so much. So do we get that special, I mean, for the, for, for the... For the first 10, Okay, for the first 10, for the first 10, you get all of it. <laughs> so you okay, have access. Okay. But the next 25, you don't get the one-on-one. -on -one. So the next 30, you don't get the design thinking group. Ah, so nampak tak? Nampak tak? I don't know But for uh, the lecturers, um, <laughs> for the organizing committee, uh, just drop me an email. Let's work something out. And oh, I'm open amazing. to actually discuss it. Yeah, we even uh, like uh, for 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 the managing committee. 
I even want to extend this. We are also Magic, also working closely with organizations out there to basically offer our mechanics just now, the three elements that you took yeah. Yeah. to your organization. So imagine we can actually gamify your courses the MMU. Not the and then you all, hear that. And and you don't need and you don't need to actually do a lot of things. Stuff. You don't need we gonna do the heavy lifting. We already do the we've already done the heavy lifting. All you need to say is just yes or no. Ah <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm very good at selling things. So uh, selling ah uh, so so I'm just a bit of wisdom to, to all the, the students uh that is what listening. Upskill yourself. So, so yeah, just register. So participant, mm. Shafi is he a hustler, hacker, or hipster? I'm I'm <laughs> confused now. I'm confused. So that, what is don't, it? Don't, uh, for me, uh, I don't I don't <laughs> believe in labels. <laughs> Right. Let's. We, we. The world is grey. Right. So, try try to keep your mindset as well. Yes. Tan Sui Hong. Just, just register. We our our algorithms, our back end systems are intelligent enough to identify, uh, and we we are keeping track. So no worries. <laughs> I'm so, glad I didn't register yesterday. Okay, I just registered, and it's in the member area. Is that the end of it? Yes. Once you actually start seeing the batch, you done nampak the P. So P stands for people, right? Personal. So the P and then a dash of numbers are that is the number that you need to send to me as a new email. Uh, and then I'll check the timestamps. And then you could I would actually get okay. This this uh perks, right? Okay, this rewards is not for the committee members now. Okay, especially for the for the attendees. Committee members, you guys have special ni yeah, set aside. Kita kita discuss later. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, okay. I uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Ifa. Uh, I hope you guys just registered my magic dot my slash campus. Uh, feel free to drop me an email you have if you have any questions further on. So that's my email. I'll try my best to answer. If I don't answer quickly, please don't be mad at me. You know. <laughs> Magic is a very fast-paced organization, yes. so we mang kita uh, Sometimes we tend to lose things. Oh, thank yes. you. Happy thank Sudin you. Hayat. <laughs> Laju. <laughs> Laju. 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 First ten. Okay. Hopefully. One, one, two, three. Back to you. Uh, thank you so much, yeah. Happy. That's amazing and amazing. Uh, perks, goodies. You know, it's like a, it's, it's, this is even better than goodie bags. You know, we initially was worried we couldn't give any good advice to our students. We couldn't give any refreshment because it's virtual, you know, but having you here, wow, that's amazing. They got, they got a one-to-one -one mentorship. Yeah, yeah. In terms of magic goodies too, once they have actually registered nanti, uh, let's discuss logistics. So oh, that, yeah, uh, yeah. so Thank even, you. so see, see guys, logistics, design thinking open-ended, yeah, it can be fitted to be like everything, even logistics and whatnot. So do you need to send an email to check if you can claim the perks? Okay, uh, you just drop an email with your campus ID, ID. Uh, number. Yeah, That's all. right. And then I I I gonna check based on our timestamp. Now, my chum, uh, uh, Mr. Ong Jin Wei just now said if you see the, in the dashboard, if you already log in, if you already see, okay, I'm gonna show you guys. <laughs> so. so, so my magic of my okay. Hold on, yeah. So my magic of my. If you actually already logged in, now this is the success rate. If you actually no, you don't have to actually have any start startup ideas. Just register. You get the whole magic yeah. to support you, right? So you don't have to actually uh, have any idea. You know, go through all the courses, most of the things that we actually do are right now are free, right? Uh, and, and, and you don't have to pay, right? Hold on, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. let me check the good job. <laughs> See, internet connection, very slow, right? Uh, so if you already log in, Okay, I'm supposed to remind. Take photo before we end. Take photo yes, before take photo, we end. Yes, take photo. Take photo. <laughs> take photo before we end. 
take photo with all of us. Tak, register korang, register startup campus member, baru take photo. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you landed on this page, right, and then you, you see this, if you see this, right, P20 yes, okay. and EQIC, just to double check, right, if you this, then you already registered. If you go to this section, campus ID, oh, I need to tell my tech team to improve their own uh, oh, speed. Oh, yeah, the speed. Yeah, see? Uh, so if you want to double check again, this is how you actually will see it. This is basically your dashboard for your campus ID. So you could actually see your experience point, your your P. I need you guys to yes. email me this. All right. So subject, I would say subject you. Your subject would be uh, is summer, twenty twenty one, and plus sign campus ID registration. All right. If for example you want to actually do the internship juga macam tadi tu aja kak, then just drop me your your resume or your CV. Let me know, and then. Uh, I'll work something out. But that is limited spot, first come, first serve. And you guys could actually just come in. You will be working with my team. Yeah. Uh-uh. Right? So I'm offering an internship slot in my team, design team. Uh, is summer plus, no, no, plus uh, startup campus or magic startup campus. Oh, okay. I start alarm. Oh, laju. Good work. <laughs> okay. All right. That's amazing. All right. Thank you so much.